Hello. <laughs> How's it going? Uh, let's go through the open beta changes that are coming to Hoi. So for those of you that don't know, a lot of my community are sort of newer players. But if you don't know, Paradox post updates pretty regularly for like just patch notes or like open betas of upcoming changes and stuff like that. So I thought it might be helpful to you guys if I went through that and just explained some of the changes that are coming. So yeah, let me know in the comments if this is actually helpful and if you want to see more of this stuff. For those of you that are new and you don't know where to find these, literally just on the Steam page for Hearts of Iron, you can see them posted here. So features that are coming through, like I said, it's a little bit light on features themselves, but I'll go in and show you uh, how that sort of looks. So the German, Japanese and British trees hiding the obsolete branches if the game rule is turned on. I'm assuming that was some kind of bug because I feel like it did that already for the Soviet and Italian trees and stuff like that. Overall, a good feature. It makes it a bit easier to keep track of what's going on. Let me show you. Basically, obviously at the start of the game, the focus trees, I mean, the UK's isn't the biggest, but the focus trees can be quite large. Beautiful, look at that, that has vanished. Uh, so I'm assuming that's gonna be the case for like any focuses that we go through and do. That's a good change, nice quality of life improvement. Worth mentioning as well, you can actually enable or disable this if you just go into the custom game rules and under the UI section, you can opt to show or hide the obsolete branches. So if you find the focus trees are a bit overwhelming, hiding it is a good way to go. It's up to you, it's personal preference, it's entirely personal preference. I'm just reading the second one now and it's the same thing. So I'm assuming that wasn't enabled. I swear that was a thing before though. Also, okay, so this is probably like the one that is actually a feature and, and new content to the game, adding a new alt history branch to Canada's communist path. Okay, so what that looks like is these focuses here. So mend relations with the Trotskyites uh, gives you recruitable pop. That's pretty good. Canada doesn't have a lot of that. Introspective communism. So more output, more communism support. You leave the allies, can't join factions. That's fine. If you're taking over America, you're going to be strong enough to stand alone without a faction anyway you can always have your puppets as well which is like your own little faction i guess this gives you extra building slots minus holy crap minus 15 percent consumer goods factories and 10 percent output might have to play as canada sometime soon more non-core manpower and here is the war goal so this focus was originally over here but they've like moved it under this section. It's basically just allowing you to complete it from here. So you could only get the top of war goal against Canada if you went fascist, but now you can get it if you go communist or fascist. So that's pretty neat. And that's gonna make the strategy of playing as Canada and early warring the US and just taking them over and being super strong from the beginning. That's gonna make that a whole lot easier, uh, especially looking at the communist tree, it is especially with the, the reduction of those consumer goods, definitely better than the fascist tree. All the fascist tree really gives you is the option to join Germany. Some coastal forts, unless you want to go for, like, unless you want to basically help a Germany player. If you're doing it with friends or you just want to go fascist for some reason, I guess that's when you would go down this path, but the communist path is a million times better now. I do hope that they go back and revisit all of the puppets trees like all the countries that got focuses in together for victory like canada south africa the raj australia new zealand malaya wait the british the british malaya they don't even have a focus tree what is this justice for british malaya anyway going on to the balance section germany begins with 80 transport planes rather than four balancing wise i won't do a whole lot because transport planes are pretty cheap to make anyway before they change the way the paratroopers work with by blood alone now you need 50 transport planes per division to launch a paradrop operation whereas before i think you i don't even know what the i don't even know if there was a limit i think you literally just needed transport planes to exist you could do a whole paradrop invasion with like one plane apparently so yeah it's good that they've got it's good they've uh i guess increased that uh gameplay tweaked ethiopian balance of power to decrease risk of country collapse have not played enough ethiopia to really experience this but any time that they're stopping country collapse from happening is a good thing made coring decision for Ital italo ethiopian empire available while controlling rather than owning states which is so good because that means like while you're at war and you're conquering the states that you're trying to core you don't have to take them in the peace deal which means that you if you lose them you would have to go to war again you can just go through and start coring stuff as you go which is 
so great. It's such a hassle anytime you're trying to make a formable nation or core territory, especially if one of the major players are in there, they'll just steal everything from you. So that makes it a lot easier. Makes possible to move the capital to Jerusalem. I'm pretty sure that's for an achievement potentially. Yes, yeah, so for the Crusader Kings for achievement, take Jerusalem and move the capital there. I think there was either a focus or a decision which would move your capital to Axum and then it was like locked and then you couldn't move it again. So yeah, that's a, a good change as well. Made it possible for Ethiopia to collaborate with Italy as the monarchy as well as fascist. Just unlocking more playthrough routes for you. I guess that's if Italy goes the monarchy as well. It's time for me to visit revisit Ethiopia, I think. I played it a little bit when they came out, but I've really not given it its, uh, its due, due justice. Improved regional supply depot national focus for Ethiopia. Let's see what that gives us. Reduces attrition by 25%, non-combat out of supply penalties by minus 10%, and reduces supply consumption by 15%. I don't know what it was before. Now, let, let's check that. Right, so it only reduced your attrition and now those other bonuses, especially that supply bonus of minus 15%, that's gonna make things so much easier. And I guess incentivizes you to keep the chute. I think every time I'd done this before, I'd expanded the Mahal and gone down this side. So that's so good. That's an incredible bonus. Made multiple investments at the same time possible for Ethiopia. That is actually so good. So when you do play as Ethiopia, one of the focuses allows you to like develop your different states and like get more factories and stuff like that. So being able to do them concurrently would is just going to help you explode. And that, I think that was like one of the big things limiting you. So definitely a great change there. I'll make a video on Ethiopia soon, I think. And added Camry to the Sultanate of Alsa. I would have thought that would be something that they would have already. Given their location of being literally two thirds desert, uh, you would have thought there'd be camels available to them, but you know, it is what it is. That This is one country that I've not gotten around to playing yet. So it would be so good if they started out just with the Camry template. Yeah, maybe there's something that, maybe there's something to be done there. That could be good. Uh, looking at the UI stuff. So the disabling of construction of railway lines on the map will remove them from the construction UI. And that's so good. That was like, that was a pain that would happen where if you're trying to build railways and then change your mind or you build them in the wrong place, you'd try to delete them. And there would just be this like production line stuck there in your construction queue with like no number on it. It would just be a railway line. And eventually it would like just go through and disappear. But just gonna, I'm so OCD about keeping my construction queue, my production lines and everything neat and tidy. So yeah, that's just gonna make things a lot more simple. Delete building button should now be visible and usable on UI scaled clients. Interesting. I scale up my UI by like 1.2. I'm interested to see if there's like a feature that I've never seen before. Hang on, let's tag to a country. Oh my God. Look at this. Okay, so for the entire time I've played Hearts of Iron, I did not know that you could delete buildings. I thought you could convert them, but I never realized you could delete them. Okay, UI scaling, experimental. So if I drop that down to one, wow, look how small the menu is even. I've got a, I've got a pretty big monitor. So, oh, it's so tiny. I hate that. Yeah, no. So I like, if I had to play the whole game with buttons this small, that would drive me insane. Okay. So if you hover a mouse over an invasion arrow, the whole path will be visible, even if it's overlapped by another one. So that's just going to like bring your attack order to the front so you can see it, which is handy. Uh, visual improvement of the create faction window. Big Scandy boys. I mean, that menu looked the same. I don't know. It, does it look different to you guys? Let me know. Army theater groups will show the reinforcement priority. Ah, oh, there, it shows it there. So if you have different theaters, you can set which ones are reinforced like first rather than others. So for example, like I'll often have my like port defending garrison divisions just in their own uh, theater below. And then you can set that to the, like the low reinforcement priority. And now it'll show you here, which is really great. It's also a good idea if you send volunteers and it pops up in the volunteer theater, you can set the reinforcement priority to high. So that way they stay equipped and they're, they're gonna maximize the amount of XP you're getting because they'll be fully equipped divisions in a battle rather than like half equipped, which then reduces the XP gain you get. Uh, I'm gonna ignore modding because I don't mod and I don't think any of you guys do either. <laughs> For the bug fix stuff, when adding a production line, initial efficiency is now only set for slots that have an active factory. Cool. 
Don't know what that means either. Fix the creation of unbuildable play variants. Like, I feel like some of this is AI behavior. Focus tree screen will properly refresh when something changes the display, like when a player chooses the branch and it hides the other ones, which we saw earlier when we completed that focus as the UK and it hit all the other ones. That's good. Ah, fix the exploit of ignoring the special forces cap when changing army templates. So that was basically a thing that you could do where you would you basically train a bunch of divisions and then you could convert them to like a very small special forces template and then like I, I think it was like making the template like way bigger before the conversion thing had gone through you could basically have like an unlimited special forces army which certain people in our community did in our multiplayer games and he knows who he is motorized rocket fuel usage increased from 0.12 to 1.2 to be in line with trucks I wish I knew that that was a thing because I would have just run around with whole armies full of motorized rocket artillery. <laughs> That's a good change if anyone's come across this before. Uh, certain designers would need like, it would say they would need a specific naval designer, but you would actually need like one not listed. So good that that's fixed. Build cost equipment stat modifiers display the correct color of a bonus. Green for positive, green for, green for negative, red for positive. Should it not be the other way around? Uh, cool. So that's pretty much it. That's the uh, latest war effort Operation Pike open beta 1.12.11 checksum 66 CE. So yeah, hope you guys like that. I uh, hope it was helpful. If you guys want more of this, let me know. Just a quick one today. Um, but yeah, I've also posted a video. So that's just gone up as well. Feel free to check that out. I'll have that pop up here. I'll have that appear now on the screen. Thanks for watching. Bye.